Okay, here we're going to be looking at genotype versus phenotype and how understanding this difference will relate to this term called phenohunting, which is often used in the cannabis industry. So genotype is the genetics of the organism. It's referring to the actual DNA sequence, the actual double-stranded DNA sequence. Not to say what it looks like, because that's phenotype. Genotype are the actual genetics of that organism. Phenotype is the observable characteristics of that organism, and it can be the result of interactions with the genotype and the surrounding environment. So phenotype is how it physically looks. Genotype is referring to the actual genetics. So we get to this term phenohunting. Well, it's, it's short for phenotype hunting. And this is referred to as searching for a particular plant that is demonstrating a desirable trait out of a large population. So we have this large population here, high degree of G genetics, high degree of looks, and we go through a process of selecting for certain phenotypes, certain uh, characteristics that we see in a particular plant and want to breed that partic uh, particular trait further and replicate that. So phenohunting uh, or cloning and, or tissue culture could also be used. And once we have the chosen individual, this will ensure that multiple plants exhibit that desired trait. So once we phenohunt, we find that one that we're really interested in, we then will clone that particular one. Just like a coffee machine, here we see two duplicates. In some cases, this material can be used for breeding to help increase the odds of transferring one trait and combining it with another. So in certain types, some people will phenotype uh, certain males looking at breeding. Uh, other times that phenotype hunting is for females, uh, particular plant morphology or particular um, aromas produced or something unique or different. However, one word of caution with phenol hunting is looks can be deceiving. Uh, since you're selecting traits based on phenotypes, this may result potentially for a high degree of variability. So even though two things may look the same, uh, looks can be deceiving as we see here with the leading tower of Pisa, kind of forced perspective there. Uh, it's because two traits may or look alike or we may see something that looks like what we want, uh, that can be sometimes deceiving when we go through and propagate it or breed it further. So an example of this, when phenohunting goes wrong, uh, there was a time when breeders were looking for to improve bonsai plant diversity, and the search was on to, to find a new bonsai plant, you know, a new small dwarf uh, plant for um, container gardening, for example. Uh, many people thought they hit the jackpot when they went to the beach because there were many trees that are bonsai um, size, despite being very old. So they were able to determine they had a bunch of these older tree species that were very small and be very conducive to a container garden. They don't want a tree that's going to grow full size. Uh, so a lot of breeders took these plants and thought they kind of hit the jackpot there with finding varieties that were, for whatever reason, old but still very small. The downfall was when these plants were brought into greenhouses to kind of propagate, they began to show normal plant behavior. So what was actually happening is while at the beach, where salt water and a lot of stress, uh, winds, poor soils, uh, this was actually stunting the trees, giving them a bonsai phenotype, even though they had the genotype to grow to full-size trees. And when they were brought in the greenhouse for propagation, they were given a better environment, and they started growing more normally. So again, this is just a word of caution. That phenol hunting can go wrong because you're basing it on the simple how a plant looks and not based necessarily off the genes. The genotype and phenotype can sometimes differ.